Okay, so you want to lock cells and gray them out based on a condition. I've got four examples to show you where this might be useful. First example, list of participants. And then I've got column C, whether or not payment has been received. Now I only want to be able to type a start date or assign a group if payment has been received. So I should better do it for Bob. Type today's date in and assign a group. But if I come to Bill and try and do the same thing, then I get a message, you cannot enter a start date or assign a group until payment is received. Another example we've got here is we've got a class which is currently open, so I can add more delegates. But as soon as I close it from this drop-down list, you can see it grays out the cells that aren't currently being used. And if I add it Betty, or try to, it would tell me the class is now closed. Now similar, but slightly different. Here I've got a class limit of five. If I try and add Belinda, it tells me the class is full. If I change this to six, it would show me there's one more seat available and I would be able to add Belinda. Last one. So an offer date can only be given if documents have been received within the deadline, so Bob's okay. But for Bill, we've not even received the document, so if I try and add an offer date, an offer date cannot be given. So let's see how we can apply this technique to these four scenarios. So in the first example, as a reminder, I only want to be able to specify a start date and assign a group if payment has been received. So your first step would be to select the cells that you want to apply this rule to. And then you go to the data tab on your ribbon. And in the data tools group, click on the data validation button. On the settings tab in the allow dropdown, select custom and untick ignore blank. I'm doing that because I have a blank cell here for Bertha. And then in the formula box, you need to type the following formula equals, and then click into C2 equals yes and yes goes in quotation marks so i'm saying that someone can only enter a value in the cells that i've selected here if the value in column c is equal to yes now the rule that i'm writing is written for the active cell that's the first cell i selected it's the cell with a white background and then that formula gets copied throughout the rest of the selection now, because of that, I need to lock the column reference in this formula. And to do that, you just put a dollar in front of the C. So that now means that the rule for column D and column E refers to column C. If I hadn't locked the C, the rule for the group column would be looking in column D, which I really don't want. Now, the finishing touch is to specify an error alert. So I've clicked on the error alert tab and I've already written my error alert for you. In the title box, I specified start date and group assignment. And my error message is, you cannot specify a start date or assign a group until payment is received. Click on OK. So let's see if this works. Should better type in a start date for Bob and assign a group. But if I try to do the same thing for Bill, I should get that message. And the same should be true for Bertha, who has neither a yes or no in column C. Let's see if that's the case. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you how to do is to gray out cells that you shouldn't be able to type in. And to do that, we're going to use something called conditional formatting. So your first step would be to select the cells that you want to apply the conditional formatting to. And then you go to the Home tab on your ribbon, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Then you select this option, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And then you've got to write a formula in this box down here. So the formula would be equals C2. Now notice that it's created an absolute reference there, one with $2. I only need to lock the column reference. So I'm going to delete that second dollar. And then I'm going to say, if C2 is not equal to yes, then I want a gray background. So I click on this format button, I go to the fill tab and I select a gray background color. Now if I change this to yes, 
it would remove the gray background color and I should better type a start date in. Okay, so that's the first example. Let's move on to the second example. So with this one, I want a drop down list in G1 that allows me to say open or closed. So we'll start by doing that. Select a G1, go to the data tab, go to the data validation button, go to settings, allow list. And the two options are open, comma, closed. Click on OK. So now I've got a drop down list. I can say the class is open or it's closed. Let's say it's open to begin with. Now, if it's open, I should just better type in as many delegate names as I want to. But if it's closed, I don't want to be able to type any more names in this list. So I'd start by selecting the cells that I want to apply the rule to. And then I'd go to the data tab on my ribbon. Go to the data validation button. In the settings tab, in the drop down list, choose custom. And then your formula would be equals G1, and that would need to be locked. That's with two dollars. Now I press the F4 key to achieve that. If the F4 key on your keyboard doesn't work, just type a dollar before the G and a dollar before the one. And I'm going to say that in order to be able to type values in these cells, G1 must equal open. Error alert. Let's say our title is class. And we'd say something like class is closed. Click on OK. So let's change this to open. Let's add Belinda. Seems fine. But if I change it to closed, and try to add Betty. It tells me the class is closed. Now, what I would like to happen is that the cells that are not being used get grayed out if the class is closed. So we can do that with conditional formatting. If I select these cells, go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now, there are two things that need to be true for the cell to be grayed out. The first thing would be that G1 equals closed. And the second thing that needs to be true is that the cell needs to be blank. So because there are two rules, I need to use the AND function. AND returns true if all the logical tests you list are met. So my first test would be, is G1, and we leave that as an absolute reference, equal to closed. And the next rule is, is G3, which is the active cell, the cell that we're writing the rule for, is that empty? Now I need to take the dollars out of G3. I'm using the F4 key to do that, or you can just remove the dollars manually. Is G3 equal to an empty text string? Now G3 doesn't have dollars in it because as the formula gets copied down, we want to refer to G4, G5, G6, G7, G8, etc. So I close the bracket. And then I choose a format if both those rules are met. Let's go for a gray background again. Click on OK. And you can see now, because the class is closed, I can't add any more delegates to the list. If I changed it to open, it would clear that gray background. OK, let's move on to the next example. Again, we have a class and we have a limit of five delegates in the class. I've already got five here. I don't want to be able to add any more delegates to the list. So I'm going to start by selecting the cells that I want to apply the rule to. I go to the data tab on my ribbon, data tools group, data validation, settings, allow, custom, and I've got to write a formula that works out how many people are already in the class and check whether it's less than or equal to five. So to do that, I can use the count a function. Count A will count the number of non-empty cells, and I'm counting within this range, and I need to lock that range. So I used F4 to do that. If F4 on your keyboard doesn't work, you need dollars in front of each of these characters within the range. Then I'm gonna say, is it less than or equal to the value in cell I1? And I need to lock that as well. 
So my error alert title will be something like class, error message, class is full. Click on OK. So if I add Belinda, I get the message class is full. If I changed this to six, I should be able to add Belinda, but not another person. So now I want to be able to gray out cells that I can't use in this list. But at the moment I'm allowing six delegates, so these cells should be grayed out. And to do this, select the cells, home tab on your ribbon, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And then you're gonna write your formula in this little box down here. And we're going to use the rows function. Rows counts the number of rows in a given range. And what we do is we start off by referencing the first cell in our list. So that's I3 and then colon. And then you'll notice it automatically comes up with I3 again, but that last I3 we need to take the dollars out of. So I'm gonna click into that reference and delete the dollars, or you can use the F4 key to do the same thing. Now the reason I'm taking the dollars out of the second part of that range reference is so that the range reference grows as it's copied down this list. So initially the number of rows will be one, but as the form is copied down to build cell, the number of rows will be two, then three, four, five, six. So that's fine until we get to the seventh row, which exceeds the limit for the class. So if it exceeds that, we want to have a gray background. So I'm gonna close the bracket for the rows function and I'm going to say, is that count of rows greater than the value that I've typed in I1? If it's true, I want a grey background. Click on OK. And there we have it. If I change this to 7, you can see I've got one more place in the class. OK, let's move on to the last example. So in this last example, I should only be able to enter an offer date if payment has been received and where it's been received before or on the deadline. So let's start by selecting those cells, go to the data tab on our ribbon, go to the data validation button, allow custom formula. And two things need to be true. So I need to use the and function. The first thing that needs to be true is that payment has been received. So M2, cannot be empty, so not equal to an empty text string. And the second thing that needs to be true is that the receive date needs to be on or before the deadline. So is M2 less than or equal to L2? Close the bracket. And I need to untick ignore blank because I have blank cells in the received column. Error alert. I've already typed that in for you. Offer date and offer cannot be made. If I click on OK, let's see if this works. Should better offer a date to Bob. It seems fine. What about Bill? I get that message, offer cannot be made. Now for conditional formatting, I'd want to gray out the cells where I shouldn't be able to enter an offer date. The formula that we've created in our data validation it's actually what we need for our conditional formatting. So I'm going to copy that, control C, select these cells, then I'm going to go to the home tab, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And I'm going to paste in that rule. But at the moment, if I applied this rule with a gray background, what it would do is it would format the cells where I can offer a date. But actually I want the opposite. So because I want the opposite, I could put the whole of this test within the not function. So what was true will now be false and what was false will now be true. If I click on okay, you can see that it's grayed out the relevant cells. And so we did receive payment from Bill just in time see that cell is no longer grayed out and I can offer a date. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.